Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering glaucoma. These uh, ocular disorders are very important for you to know. I'm going to make it a series, so make sure you watch each video so you can be able to tell the difference between something like, you know, glaucoma and retinal detachment. But for this video, I'll be covering glaucoma. Before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel. How can you do that? Like this video. You're going to love it. Press that like button now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And I'm also now offering the next generation NCLEX review where I go over the questions, uh, the question types, the type of questions that you should expect to see. I teach you how to answer uh, questions, even if you don't know the answer. I go over content that you definitely need to know for your board. So make sure you go to my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com, and look at the booking availability. availability. Bookings go fast. I'm warning you now, but go check that out. Also, Almost daily, you guys can find me covering a variety of nursing topics on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So let's get started. Glaucoma. And if you could see in my handwriting right here, what did I write? I wrote increased pressure in the eye. My handwriting is horrible, but by now you guys can tell what I'm saying. That's what glaucoma is. It's increased pressure in the eye. So look what it says. It says glaucoma is a group of disorders and it's characterized by increased intraocular pressure and the consequences of elevated pressure, optic nerve atrophy, and peripheral vi vision field loss. All of these are things that can happen because of that increased pressure in the eye. Many people with glaucoma are even unaware of their condition. Here's the thing, you know, just like how they say hypertension is a silent killer, people will walk around with hypertension and they're asymptomatic. They don't even know that they have hypertension until they have their first stroke, right? So with glaucoma, which is increased pressure where? In the eye, same thing. Many people are unaware of their condition. The incidence of glaucoma increases with age. So that's important for you to know as they get older, the risk factor for glaucoma increases. Blindness from glaucoma is largely preventable with early detection and appropriate treatment. So what does this tell us? This tells us that it's very important that that patient is checked early so it can be detected early because we can prevent them from losing uh, vision in the eye, okay? Let's take a look at the etiology and pathophysiology. So uh, primary open angle glaucoma, that's the most common type of glaucoma. In primary open angle glaucoma, the outflow of aqueous humor is decreased in the trabecular meshwork. Let's stop right there. When you guys are reading and you see something, do not just gloss over and keep going. It has to make sense to you in your brain. So let's look at what's happening in primary angle glaucoma. It says the outflow of aqueous humor is decreased. So guess what? All of that fluid is being trapped. And that fluid that's being trapped is what's increasing the pressure in the eye. The drainage channels, the drainage channels become clogged, and that's why it's not draining appropriately. The drainage channels become clogged like a clogged kitchen sink. Damage to the optic nerve can result. Why? The fluid's not draining the way it's supposed to. So what's happening? It's building up and building up and building up. That's your primary um, open angle glaucoma. Let's keep going. Let me lower this a little bit. Nope. All right. Primary uh, angle open glaucoma is due to reduction of the outflow of aqueous humor. This is the second time that the author has written this. They wrote it in the first column and now they're writing it again. Why? It's important for you to know what the problem is. That aqueous humor, that fluid is not draining properly. So primary angle open glaucoma is due to a reduction in the outflow of aqueous humor that results from angle closure. Usually this is caused by lens bulging forward as a result of the aging process. Well, isn't that interesting? Look at this last line. Isn't that another way of them telling us that the risk uh, for this happening increases as the patient gets older? Yeah. When you're studying and you see the author kind of telling you the same information in a different way, or they're repeating the same information that was already provided, that means it's important for you to know, most likely it'll be content for a test question somewhere in your academic career. 
Let's keep going. Clinical manifestations. You know anything that I underline, highlight, put a star next to, it's important to know. Primary open angle glaucoma. It develops slowly and without symptoms of pain or pressure. Well, that makes sense because we saw earlier, the author said how um, people with glaucoma, they won't even know that they have it because they're asymptomatic. When you have pain or you feel pressure, you know, won't you go to your healthcare provider? But what happens with primary open angle glaucoma, they won't feel that. So they'll walk around asymptomatic. It doesn't mean they don't have it. They still have it. They're just not, not exhibiting any uh, symptoms. The patient usually does not notice the gradual vision um, field loss until peripheral vision has been severely compromised. Let's stop there. Remember, with uh, glaucoma, the patient can end up losing um, their sight if it's not compromised. But look what I have highlighted. That's important to catch. They won't even realize that they have glaucoma until that periphery vision has been severely compromised. Eventually, the patient with the untreated glaucoma, they'll have what's known as tunnel vision. And that's where a small center of the field can be seen and all the peripheral vision is absent. So they can see like literally directly only what's in front of them. All of their peripheral uh, vision is lost. So this is something important to know about glaucoma that how it starts off is that peripheral vision that's lost and the patient ends up getting what's known as tunnel vision. Acute angle clo uh, closure glaucoma causes a definite symptoms. So we're going from primary open angle glaucoma to now we're talking about acute angle clo um, closure glaucoma. Look what they have to say about acute angle closure glaucoma. With acute angle closure glaucoma, they have definite symptoms. What does that include? Sudden, excruciating pain in or around the eye. Let's stop right there. Well, guess what? That sentence right there just told us a big difference of how we can know if the patient has primary open versus acute angle. Because with primary open, patients asymptomatic. They won't even know, realize something's wrong until basically they have tunnel vision because they've lost all of their peripheral vision, right? But when we're talking about angle, acute angle glaucoma, Patient's going to have pain. Matter of fact, the pain that they're going to have is going to be excruciating pain. It's going to be in or around the eye. Let's keep going. This is often accompanied by nausea, vomiting, visual symptoms that they're going to have. This is important to catch. Let me elevate this for you a little bit. Okay. Uh, visual uh, symptoms, colored halos around lights, blurred vision, ocular redness. I highlighted colored halos around lights just because for testing purposes, if you get a question where, you know, they're asking the difference between the acute angle closure and the primary, um, it's either going to be about which one has pain or does it have pain, which one has a tunnel vision or this, the colored halo or halos around lights. So that's how come I have it highlighted. Just make sure you know it. Let's talk about diagnostic tests. That's important. Intraocular pressure is elevated in glaucoma. We know that, that ocular uh, humor is increasing. What's the normal, 10 to 21? Professor D, do I have to know it? Absolutely. That's your normal. So in glaucoma, obviously, since it's increased, we're going to see it higher than 21, right? All right. Very good. Let's keep going. In open angle glaucoma, slit lamp microscopy reveals a normal angle. And remember, that's open angle. Now let's talk about uh, interprofessional care. The primary focus of glaucoma therapy is to keep the intraocular pressure low enough to prevent the patient from uh, developing optic nerve damage. I'm going to switch the page.
Now, I know there's a table above, but I want to talk to you guys about chronic open angle, and then we'll get into the table for interprofessional care. It'll make more sense after um, if I do it in that way. So let's talk about chronic open angle glaucoma. So the initial treatment in chronic open angle glaucoma is with drugs. I'm going to go over that table with you um, in a second. I'll let you know which ones you absolutely must know. And the patient must understand that continued treatment and supervision are necessary because those drugs are what control the glaucoma, but it does not cure the glaucoma. Okay. And when it comes to uh, chronic open angle glaucoma, take a look at this arrow that I have. I have the asterisk and then the arrow down here. Look at what I wrote. Let me move the camera for you. I wrote, if they stop taking their meds, these meds for glaucoma, if they stop taking those meds or they're non-compliant, they don't take those ocular medications the way that they're supposed to, chances are very high, they're going to go blind. They will lose their vision. Ocular medications are not the ones to play with and try to decide when you want to take them. You will lose your vision. Okay, so that's very important to know. Moving on. Let's talk about acute angle closure glaucoma. I'm playing with the lights, guys. I'm trying to get it on for you. All right, acute angle closure glaucoma. And on the side, what I wrote here was medical emergency because that's exactly what it is. Acute angle closure glaucoma. This is an ocular emergency. This requires immediate intervention. Myotics. Um, guys, there's a difference between your myotics and uh, mydriatics. Uh, um, mydriatics, that D is for dilation. Myotics is for constriction. We'll talk about that in a second. In a second. But what you need to know now for acute uh, angle for acute angle closure glaucoma, myotics and oral or hi IV hyperosmotic agents and mannitol, these are usually successful in immediately lowering the intraocular pressure. So when it comes to acute angle closure glaucoma, it's a ocular emergency. And the name of the game is decreasing that intraocular pressure. That is the number um, one goal to increase intraocular pressure. So you should expect for that patient to be given myotics, um, hyperosmotic agents, something like mannitol, all of those which can decrease the intraocular pressure. Let's take a look at nursing alert for myotics. Drug alert, myotics, warn patients about decreased visual acuity, especially in dim lights. Now, a famous test question that I see, I've seen hundreds of times when it comes to myotics, you know, which one will require further intervention or further teaching or further clarification. You know, the patient who's on myotics that say they love to drive at night. Well, there's a problem because with myotics, the patient will have decreased visual acuity, especially in dim light. They need to have a very bright light so they can see better. Implementation. Nursing implementation. Loss of vision as a result of glaucoma is a preventable problem. Remember, if um, this disorder is detected early, the patient can start getting tr um, uh, treated early, okay? It's a preventable problem. Teach the patient and caregiver about the risk of glaucoma and that it increases with age. This is the third time I'm seeing the author let us know that when it comes to glaucoma, the incidence increases with age. A comprehensive ophthalmic examination is important in identifying people with glaucoma and those at risk for developing glaucoma. So the current recommendation for an ophthalm ophthalmologic examination is every two to four years for people between the age of 40. This is the uh, table I'll talk to you guys about. 40 and 64 years old. So between 40 and 64 years old, they need to start getting those regular um, examinations. Acute care. 
Patient with acute angle glaucoma, they require immediate medication to lower the intraocular pressure. It has to be administered in a timely manner, an appropriate manner according to the ophthalm ophthalmologist prescription. Let's talk about uh, gerontologic considerations. So considerations for the elderly. Many older patients with glaucoma have systemic illnesses or take systemic medications that can affect their therapy. Remember, the drug that they're taking for glaucoma is to decrease intraocular pressure. So in particular, the patient that are taking beta adrenergic block, blocking glaucoma agent may experience an additive effect if a systemic beta adrenergic blocking drug is also being given. Let's stop right there because it's important for you guys to understand. So let's say that patient, we're dealing with a geriatric patient, let's say they have hypertension or they have some kind of cardiac condition and they are taking um, a, a beta adrenergic uh, a blocking medication and now they're getting a beta adrenergic blocking medication for glaucoma, it's going to have an additive effect, which can cause that patient to have a hypotensive crisis, right? It can cause these adverse effects, so you have to be careful. All beta adrenergic blocking glaucoma agents are, look at this, ding, 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 contraindicated in the patient with bradycardia, heart block, greater uh, than first degree heart block, cardiogenic shock, and overt cardiac failure. It makes sense. Think about it. These beta adrenergic blocking agents, yeah, they can decrease the blood pressure, but what else do they do? Decrease the heart rate. So does that make sense? A patient who already has bradycardia? To give them that, give them this type of medication. Are you trying to stop the heart? Absolutely not. So this is very important. That's why I have that highlighted in orange. I got a whole bunch of stars. Make sure you know this. And you see, I wrote no on both sides. Don't say I didn't warn you. If you're taking this right now and you have a test coming up, I guarantee you this is going to be on your test some way, somehow. It's very important for you to know. The non-cardioselective beta adrenergic blocking glaucoma agents are also contraindicated. Ding, ding, ding. It's an orange again. They're contraindicated in the patient with COPD. Why? I want you to think about it. Guys, those beta blockers that are um, um, non-cardioselective, they act on the one... Uh, um, uh, the one and two, right? Here's how you guys remember. You have one heart and two lungs, right? So if it's non-cardio selective, it does not only work on the heart so it can decrease that heart, work, heart rate. It works on the lungs too. So imagine a patient with COPD. They already have breathing issues. You think that this would be a good medication to give them? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So make sure you guys know this. If that patient has COPD, they have asthma, they should not be getting a beta adrenergic uh, blocking medication. The hyperosmolar agents that precipitate heart failure or pulmonary edema in uh, the susceptible patient, they're not going to get. And it makes sense. The older patient that's on high dose aspirin therapy, they might be on high dose aspirin therapy for rheumatoid arthritis. They should not take carbonic androhase inhibitors. The beta adrenergic agonist can cause tachycardia or hypertension, which can have serious consequences on the older patient. So don't, don't shoot the messenger guys. I know I have a lot of highlight and underline, but I do it because I promise you guys need to know this for your test. Okay, so make sure you commit this to memory. Make sure you understand, especially the ones that have a star next to. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right, now we're going to go back because I want to go over that interprofessional care table and I want to go over the medications. All right. So let's take a look at this table, the interprofessional care for glaucoma. Diagnostic tests, of course, your visual acuity, you're going to be doing the Snelling chart. Tonometry, remember, you need to know 10 to 21, that is the normal. Um, ophthalmoscopy, uh, slit lamp microscopy. Now management, management for a chronic open angle, you need to know, look at those meds, beta adrenergic blockers, but make sure you know the contraindications, beta adrenergic agonists, cholinergic agents, those are your meiotics. Not mydriatics, make sure you know the difference. They're going to try to trick you on your test. Myotics and your carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and make sure you know the contraindication for that as well. And your um, treatment for acute 
angle closure glaucoma, it's going to be your topical cholinergic agents. Again, those are your meiotics. Hyperosmotic agents, make sure you know the, the contraindications for those. Laser peripheral iridotomy and surgical iridotomy. All right, one last thing. Let's go over these meds. I, I was saying irid, uh, for the surgical, it's ir iridectomy. They actually remove the iris. There we go. So what I wrote on top is want to decrease pressure. That's the name of the game. All these, these meds that we're about to go over, the point of them is to decrease the pressure by one action or another. So let's start with our beta adrenergic uh, blockers. You guys can read this on, the, on, on your own. I'm just going to go over what I either have highlighted or underlined. Um, side effects, very important side effect that you need to know. Pulmonary distress. It can, include, uh, it can also cause bradycardia, heart block. So your nursing considerations, obviously, we saw in the side effects of the beta adrenergic uh, blockers that they can cause brady, uh, bradycardia, they can cause heart block, they can cause pulmonary distress. So in your nursing considerations, you need to remember that it's going to be contraindicated with a patient that has bradycardia, uh, that has cardiogenic shock, that has cardiac failure. We're not trying to make the problem worse. Okay. Uh, make sure you know the medications that fall under the beta adrenergic blockers. There are these medications right here. I'm not going to try to pronounce them, but you see them. Make sure you understand that these are the beta adrenergic blockers. And I want you to know this. Look at the ending. The L in LOL, L O L. These are your beta adrenergic blockers. Now, something else I want to bring to your attention is that this medication is non cardio selective. This is a non-cardio selective beta blocker, the lovobunolol. It's non-cardio selective. What did I tell you about the non-cardio selective? Not only does it act on the heart, it'll decrease the heart rate, but it acts on what? The lungs as well. So if your patient who has glaucoma, the, phys the healthcare provider orders this medication, which is cardio non-cardio selective, and you look in the patient's chart and you see your patient has a history of asthma or they have a history of COPD. Are you going to give that medication? Absolutely not. You're going to withhold it and call the healthcare provider and say, hey, I know you ordered this med, but the patient also has this diagnosis. Do you want to rethink it? Yeah. Okay. So look at the side effects, bronchospasms, bradycardia, decreased blood pressure. What are your nursing considerations? The same as above. But in addition to that, look right here. Also contraindicated in patients with COPD or asthma. So the author of um, this, this section, they already said this to us in um, the text, but this is so important. They're putting this information in the table. Make sure you know this, guys. You're going to see it again. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right, let's talk about the meiotics, the cholinergic agents. Pilocarpine, you need to know this medication. You need to know that it's a meiotic, it's a, a cholinergic, cholinergic agent. The action, remember how earlier when I was talking to you about the difference between meiotic and uh, mydriatic, and I told you with the mydriatics, those cause dilation, with the meiotics, those cause constriction. Here you go or contraction, okay? With the um, um, meiotics, they stimulate iris sphincter contraction, causing meiosis opening of the meshwork. That's important to know. Uh, side effects. I wrote this down because I didn't see it in the book and it's absolutely important for you to know. As a matter of fact, when it comes to testing, this is usually what they ask about. So um, for the side effects, Blurred vision, difficulty fo focusing. Why is that important? You need to tell them not to drive. When they take this medication, they cannot be driving because it causes blurred vision, difficulty focusing. We don't want them to get in an accident. It's all about safety. You're going to teach the patient about de uh, decreased visual acuity. Someone needs to be driving them after they get this medication. Okay. Next. Uh, the carbonic androhase inhibitors, we talked about that. The example, di uh, Diamox, it decreases, this is how it works, it decreases the aqueous humor production. 
What's important to know about uh, the nursing considerations? Look what I have here. Do not give to the elderly that are taking aspirin for rheumatoid arthritis because why they're taking high dose aspirin. And um, I'm, I lost my train of thought. I was gonna say something to you guys. It's contraindicated. I think that's what I was gonna say. So that is very important for you guys to know the contraindications for um, the beta adrenergic blockers, the non-cardio selective um, uh, blockers, and also your carbonic androhase inhibitors, okay? So make sure you guys know this table. I think, let me see if I'm missing anything. Nope. And that is it. I know glaucoma is very heavy, guys, but you're going to need to know this. So please don't shoot the messenger. I just want to make sure I covered every single thing that you're most likely going to be questioned about. I hope that uh, I made this clearer for you. So please let me know in the comment section if you'd like me to go more in depth. If you do, I will. But I think I pretty much covered it. What you see, what I went over, that's what you're most likely going to get on your next exam regarding this. But let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next. Don't forget, I have NCLEX reviews now um, on my calendar for booking and audio lessons. All can be found on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching this video, and you got to catch me on the next video.